Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to take a look at how we can integrate one of the things I'm missing actually from the Java world in C Sharp. Actually, I think it's the only thing I'm missing, and that is how Java is doing enums. And I do appreciate that many of you might not know what I'm referring to. So in the beginning of this video, I'm going to show you for context how Java does enums, and then I'm going to show you how we can do something similar in C Sharp by using a very nice library. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Hello everybody, Nick from the future here. I just want to let you know that I just released my very first course under the nickchapsas.com website all about unit testing in C Sharp. It is part of what I call my From Zero to Hero series of courses. And effectively what they are, are courses that take you from the very basics of a given topic, in this case, unit testing, and then into some real world applications, real world examples, exactly as you would see them in big companies around the world, and then into some pretty advanced stuff. Now, the first 100 of you who want to buy this course can use this coupon code that you see on the screen right now, and you're gonna get a 15% discount. So check it in the description, check it from the screen if you want it, buy it. If you can't buy it, it's totally fine. I'm still going to make two videos a week the same way I used to before. This is just extra content that I wouldn't make in YouTube anyway. So nothing's going away. I'm just going to do this too. Well, thank you very much and back to the video. So let's go over here. This is IntelliJ ID. It looks like Rider. It's mainly because the same people make it and they use the same base for all their IDs. It's actually one of the main reasons why I love Rider is because any ID I choose, I have the same look and feel and cross-platform capabilities anywhere. So anyway, let's say I want to have an enum here. So something like this, let's say enum and let's say subscription. So I want to I wanna have different types of subscriptions here. And in fact, let's change this to subscriptions. So I have like a free tier. And then I have a premium tier, and then I have a VIP tier, right? We're using enums to represent different enumerations. Now, if I go back to the main and I get the free tier here, and I do subscriptions.free, I can do a system.out.println free tier, right? And I, that will just print the thing in the console. As you can see, it says free, similar experience as in C Sharp. And if I wanna calculate a discount, so do something like uh, public static um, double calculate discount, then I would accept the subscription and I would return the discount. So maybe have like a return, um, switch subscriptions and do something like this. Say case free and returns nothing, no discount there. Then say case uh, VIP, no, that's the last one. Okay, case VIP 50% and then case premium 0.25, right? So something like this. And then to print the discount, so do something like this, I would say calculate discount free tier and then discount for tier is, so if I delete that and I run the program again and I zoom in, you can see that the discount for free tier, oh, I missed a space, um, is that. And that's how you would probably do things in C Sharp. Now, enums in Java are a very special type because they can actually behave to a degree as classes. Well, what do I mean? Well, you can have a constructor here. It's a private one, so externally you cannot call it. But this is what an enum looks like if you don't omit the parameter as constructor. Nothing changed here, but now I can have this. And why is that important? Well, I can now say string name and then double discount, right? Because the discount is directly a concern of the subscription. That's the only thing that knows about the discount and subscriptions exist for discounts. That's the thing. We don't need a separate service to handle that. That's the thing responsible. We just have to compromise with making a different method to calculate it because, well, you can't have logic in an enum, but in Java you can. And what this would look like is I can go here and say name and here is like free, so I can have a friendly name. And then I can say discount, which is uh, 0 0.0, so no discount. And I can do the same with every other subscription here. So premium is 25 and VIP, actually capitalization VIP is 0.5, so 50%. And yes, as you guessed, you can also have a private final string name here and also private final uh, double discount. And yep, you can set them. You can say this, you can say this name dot name and this discount equals 
discount. And what's the cool thing about it? Well, you can make a getter to expose it. So you can say public string name, get name, and then return the name, and then public double discount, get discount, and return the discount, right? And I can go back here. I don't need this method anymore. I don't need to separate that logic from where it really belongs and what concerns it. And I can say get discount. And in fact, for the name, I can even say dot get name because I might want to have a user friendly name. And now I can run this. And this is perfectly valid Java code. And as you can see, everything is in place. Now, obviously, you don't want to put things here that are not directly tied to this logic. But when you have scenarios like this, where this solely exists to offer functionality like this, discounts, maybe memberships, maybe something like this, then it's totally fine to have it here. A very good example for a use case for this is something like this, where you want to have like a planet, right? All the planets with their mass, the radius. Um, you can expose the values through uh, getters. By the way, for context, Java doesn't have properties. They haven't invented that yet. And that's how you can, you can use something like this. And it's great. It's, it's the only thing I'm missing because I can totally see many use cases where I can actually use this in C-sharp and I can't. But wouldn't it be awesome if there was just some way to bring those smart enums in C-sharp? I mean, you've seen the title. That's the whole point. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So there's a great package created by Steve Smith or Ardalis called Smart Enum. And I'm going to go ahead and install this in this package. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So let's use the same example. Now, we cannot use enums for this in C Sharp. It just doesn't support it yet. I know John Skate, like back in the day, tried to have a proposal for this. It never made it in. Who knows? Maybe someday it might. But many people have advocated for this in C Sharp over the years. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sub descriptions and yes this is a class and let's see how we can get similar behavior in c sharp using that package i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to change that to sealed because i don't need anything too extended and i'm going to extend the smart enum class and i'm going to put the name of my class in the generic here and this will allow me to implement some missing members namely the constructor so what i need to do to get to that same point with subscriptions is create a private static read only and then the type itself, so subscription, and name it whatever I would before, so free. And that is an, a new, and again, first goes the name of the thing, so free. And second goes the value. Same way that you would have a value in your enum. I'm going to do that two more times, one for premium and one for VIP. Two and three. Oh, wait, did I say private? This should be public, uh, and this should be public and public. So let's see how this would look like on a consumer perspective. So you'd, have, you'd go here and you'd say free equals subscriptions.free and you might have another free one right free two equals subscriptions.free now i can say console dot right line free equals free two and if i execute this you see that this returns true and it returns true because the check actually happens on the value everything else all the references everything else is irrelevant the value itself is the only thing that matters you have some other helper methods as well, the same way you do in enums. You can say subscriptions dot from name. So if you say free, you will get free from name, right? And this is also free from name equal to, well, all of this. So if I run this, as you can see, this returns true again. And you can also have free from value. So you can use the actual number here, free from value. Um, and get, I think it's one, and this would give you the exact same thing. The only thing that matters is the value. So that's the basic idea behind it. Now, of course, let's see how we can integrate this similar discount logic in this. There's actually a few ways to do that. The first, a very straightforward one, as before, would be to add it here. So double discount, and then expose it through a property. So say double discount, remove the setter, and set it in this constructor here. So you can say, um, 0 0.0, so nothing, 0.25, and also 0.5, right? Straightforward. And here you can just set it. So if I go here, I can say console.writeline discount was free uh, discount. And when I print that, I should get, in this case, zero, because the free subscription doesn't have any discount. However, this isn't the only way you can go about this. Even though this is fine, you can also change this to an abstract class and turn this into an abstract property. 
and then remove it from here. And as your logic might grow, and again, this is a very domain centric approach. So it's definitely not for everyone. I'm not saying you should go ahead and use this everywhere, but when it makes sense for your domain and your code to do it, it can bring value. So once you do that, you can go ahead and create a private sealed, and then you can have classes that implement subscriptions in here, only accessible from here. So you can say free tier, for example. And this free tier extends the subscriptions class. And of course, this has to be a class here as well. Uh, and then I'm going to implement the missing members. And then the discount, you can just provide it here, right? So it's point, um, sorry, point zero. And that's all you need to do. Let's change that into a computed property. Here we go. And then I'm going to do that for all the other ones. Uh, again, this more beefy approach only makes sense if you have a bit more logic in it. If you have like minor things, then you probably don't need this. So premium tier, and that is 25. And let's say a VIP tier, and that is 0.5. So what we need to do now is change the name and the value in here. So we're going to copy that here and remove that. We don't need it anymore. It can be internal to our class. Same goes here and same goes to the last one, the VIP one. Here we go. And again, this is all private. We don't expose any of that logic. This is for us to just organize things better. And then you can just return new free tier and then new premium tier and VIP tier. Let's see how the front end looks. It's exactly the same. I can still run this and get the exact same experience. And with that, we have a more logic reach approach to things that before were just enumerations and we had to use all the classes to get some value out of them. And by the way, you don't compromise on the serialization. This is still serializable. Some people might use this in EF as a property. I actually think that Steve has an entity framework package. Yeah, EF core, he has a package for that. You can serialize it to message pack, protobuf, UTF-8, um, autofix, json.net. There's helper packages for basically every major thing that you can think of. So you're not compromising on anything and you're just adding a bit more into your logic in your code. It is definitely a more niche feature, but I thought it's a very nice one to show to you. And don't forget, we do support open source. So if you like this, go ahead and give it a star on GitHub. It really helps the creators keep working on them. That's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.